Welcome to the Anura 3D Odometer tutorial. The focus of this video is creating geometry, assigning material parameters, defining boundary and loading conditions, as well as visualising results. Firstly, let's look at problem definition. Here you can see a screenshot of the problem definition as taken from the Anura 3D 2021 tutorial manual. This is the odometer test. So it involves a saturated soil column being loaded with a vertical load, which will suddenly be applied on the upper boundary and maintained throughout the calculation. Now onto creating input data. After opening JID, the first step is to load the Anura 3D problem type. This is done by going to the data tab, selecting problem type, and then Anura 3D 2021. Click to accept the terms and conditions. You can now see that the Anura 3D tab is viewable with all the relevant options. In order to create the input data, the first step is to create the geometry. For this, we will be starting with the line tool to create the basic shape. Click on the line tool, and then at the bottom, you can type in the coordinates of your first point. For this tutorial, it is 0, 0. This creates a fixed point, and then you can enter the second point to create the line. For this example, it is 0 0.10. Now zoom to adjust. The following point is 0 0.11, then 0 1, then join it together with 0 0.0. Be sure to click join at this point. Press escape to exit this line generation so that you can build the second part of the model. Again, go to the line tool and you can enter the points for the top section of the model. First point, 0 0.11. Click join to connect it to the existing part. Second point, 0 0.11.1. Third point, 0 0.1.1. And finally, 0 0.1. And again, join. Press escape to exit this line generation. Now click the zoom frame button to make the geometry fill the window. Now it is time to create the surfaces. First you go to geometry, create, and then down to NURB surface when you want to select by contour. Now select the lines that make up the shape of the surface you are trying to create. These will turn red as you select them. Press escape to confirm and a pink outline of the surface you have created will appear. You can also use the NURB surface button and select the lines in much the same way, again pressing escape to confirm. Now we are ready to input the material parameters. Go to Anura 3D Materials or Control Shift A and create a new material pressing the new material button and give it a new name, in this case soil. Here I've copied across the parameters from the tutorial manual and have input them here. Now you want to assign it to the relevant surface. In this case, we are just assigning to that bottom surface. And then you can click draw and all materials just to confirm it's in the correct location. Now we are ready to select the material points which will define how many material points per element there are in the finished simulation. Go to Anura 3D Material Point Specification or Control Shift B. This is a 2D model with a single point formulation. As dictated by the tutorial manual, we want to select three material points per element. As there are triangular elements, we can only select numbers from this list that is shown here. Now we assign it as we did with the materials, sign, and then select the surface, and then finish. Now we can draw colours just to check that everything is in the correct place. Now it is time to specify the fixities. Go to Anura, then fixities, and then 
we want to select lines and then solid and liquid fixity lines. First of all, we're going to be doing the X direction fixity. So assign and select the vertical lines as we don't want any material points to move horizontally through those. Now we assign the Y direction fixities to the uppermost line and the bottommost line. Again, go to draw then colours to confirm the fixities have been applied correctly. Now we are ready to assign the loading conditions. Go to Anura 3D, then loading conditions. And then following the tutorial manual, we want to select 2D solid traction with a global coordinate system with a uniform distribution for the load. The loading will be assigned in the Y direction as negative 400 and we want to apply traction on the material points. To assign this, click assign and then select the middle horizontal line. And then draw colours and we can confirm that the loading has been applied. The next step is to create the mesh. To do this, go to mesh and then make sure that the quadratic type is selected as normal. And then element type, we want to be triangular. So click and then select the whole geometry. Then go to structured and then surfaces and then assign size so that we can create a structured mesh. Select both of the surfaces and set the mesh size as 0.1 and then select all of the lines. Press escape now and then close. Now we want to generate the mesh and we want to get the meshing parameters from the model as we just assigned them. Now the mesh has been created and we are ready to view the mesh. It is also possible to view the quality of the mesh. This can be done by again going to mesh, then down to mesh quality. And here you can see the relevant information. Now we are ready to input the calculation data, which I've just copied across from the tutorial manual. Go to Anura 3D calculation data and then go through and input that data as described. And then you want to save your file by going to save and then this I've called odometer. Now we're ready to generate the input files. To do this go to Anura 3D, generate Anura 3D files or control shift Z. This window will appear to make sure you've done everything and then the process has finished. Performing calculation in Anura 3D. Firstly, locate where you've saved the files and open the .a3d. Double click on the batch file and wait for the simulation to run. When the simulation is finished, press any key. Visualization of results. Once you've opened PowerView, you need to open the Anura 3D files. Go to File and then Open. And then open the A3D folder and select Mesh Data, Scalar, Tensor and Vector files. Click OK and then Apply to view the files. For now, we just want to see the mesh data. So click the eye icon to unselect the Vector, Tensor and Scalar files. And then to view the mesh, you want to select it as a wireframe. Change the line size to two to make the mesh more visible. Now we are ready to view the liquid pressure data. Firstly, you want to turn on the eye icon to turn on the scalar data and make sure that pressure underscore liquid is selected. You can make the points larger as with the line size. Here I've selected 10. Here is the legend for the results and you can adjust this legend accordingly. For here, we're going to input a custom range from minus 400 to zero and then rescale. You can play through the simulation 
and you can see that the results match those in the tutorial manual. Click here to go back to the first frame and then you can cycle through individually frame by frame. You can also select frames in this manner. The next step in the tutorial manual is to view the displacement. So unselect the scalar files and then select the vector files. You can change the point size to 10 and then you want to select displacement underscore solid. Here you can see the legends are overlapping, so we move one and then we notice that you cannot read the displacement legend because the font matches the background. Edit the colour legend properties and change the font colours to black. You can also change the font size to make it more readable. As you can see, we don't need that active elements legends. So to remove it, just click on the mesh data and then turn off the legend with toggle color legend visibility. Now, if you select vector data again, you can adjust the legend as before to match the tutorial manual. Then click play again to watch the simulation progress. The next step is selecting material points. So unselect vector, select scalar, and then choose the material point ID data. Reset the simulation to the beginning and use the select points on button and just select a point in the middle of the model. Split the window horizontally and then select spreadsheet view. Now you can scroll down through the material points and there you can see the material point I've selected. I've just highlighted the row. Now you can see all the data. If you cycle through the time steps, you can also see the data change for that material point. Now it is time to create the first graph as described in the tutorial manual. Firstly, change the viewable data to the liquid pressure and you can see that the legend has remained as before. Then go to select points on and you want to select a point near the bottom of the model. To create the graph, go to the Filters tab, down to Data Analysis, and then Plot Selection over time. Click Apply, and now you can see a graph plotting all the data for the scalar values has appeared. Turn off all the variables and then scroll down so you can just view the liquid pressure. When you click Play, a line appears that shows you where on the plot you are at each time step. The second graph in the tutorial manual adds a second variable to this graph. So scroll down through the variables and select the volumetric strain of the solid. However, it's being plot on the same axis as the previous variable, so we need to add a secondary axis. Select the variable again and then change it to be on the bottom right axis. If needed, you can adjust the scale of either axis by selecting and scrolling down and there is the option. The final graph in the tutorial manual is plotting data from multiple material points on the same graph. So again, select a point at the bottom, the middle and the top of the model. And then go to the filters tab, data analysis, plot selection over time. And then deselect the report selection statistics. Click apply and then make sure you have selected every material point, the ID1 and ID2, as well as ID0. Scroll down through the variables and you want to select the, the liquid pressure for the three material points. And as you can see, they are now on the graph. So in this introductory chapter, we have covered how to define geometry for the odometer model, defining material properties and boundary conditions, defining loading conditions and visualising results using PowerView.